What is going on, everybody? I am AJ, and I'm going to give you guys my post weigh in thoughts for UFC 259. No countdown for the video. We're just getting uh, straight into it. But before we do, I'd like to let you guys know about prize picks. Uh, more on that in the bio down below the description. Price picks is an awesome way to play fantasy sports. You don't have to compete with sharks. There's no fish in there. Um, if you feel like you're a type of player like that, there's no mass multi entries. It's just you versus a projection. Um, there's a statistic that's um, implemented within the system and you just choose over or under on that statistic. There's NBA, NFL, so many different sports. There's even gaming on there. Um, you could use my promo code AJ100 to receive up to a hun uh, exactly 100% instant deposit bonus for up to a hundred dollars on your first deposit. That is the only site that does that only site where it's a hundred percent instant deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. So it's super fun. It's easy to play. And like I said, you get a hundred dollars on top of an initial hundred dollar deposit. Uh, if you do sign up with prize picks with the promo code AJ 100, thank you so much more on the description in the, or excuse me, more on that in the description. So now we're here to talk about the weigh-ins. Um, and, and this might just turn into a rant again, just, you know, just out of, uh, you know, natural being natural and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's it's going to go down the, the same the same type of deal that we've been that we've been talking about these past few weeks. Right. I, I don't take a whole lot of weigh ins. And I know that there was uh, definitely something that we'll talk about here uh, that, that is noteworthy. And again, I still do think it's noteworthy. But before we talk about that, let me just ask you guys something that just more so recently crossed my mind, you know, how often do we actually remember all these sort of narratives and, you know, sort of minuscule details right after the fight takes place? I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I kind of forget a lot of the stuff uh, if it's more narrative based or side of, you know, more so minor detail before the fight goes on. And it's because like we talked about before, it's just kind of noise. Uh, we're not remembering it. We're not retaining it after the fights because, we know subconsciously in our mind, it's just not a, a information worth keeping, right? And so just, I would just like to entertain the idea to you. I'm not saying you have to do it that way. I'm just trying to uh, enlighten, you know, let you know that that, that that does happen. It happens to me, perhaps it happens to you, uh, especially if, if we're, you know, uh, say having a drink or something during the event, you know, we're more likely to forget these sort of things that maybe we're, we're letting consume us prior to, to the fights, right? Um, so why why waste our energy on it, right? Why do that if if we're just kind of forget about it? You know, we might even forget about it by by the time walkouts happen, right? So so why waste our energy on that? Um, and instead, why don't we just take notes? And and I, I talked about that before, but I want to just keep hammering that home. Notes is the is easy. It, it reduces stress and it saves you time. Um, I started doing my notes for the next card, which I promise I'm not going to talk too much about. We're here for two fifty nine. But I basically had notes saved for every single fighter on the next card. And as I'm doing tape study for this go around, I'm basically watching one fight, maybe some fighters such as Mateus Nikolaou, who uh, has not been in the UFC for a few years now. I'm doing a little more film study on him because I'm not as familiar. But for the most part, these fighters that have a lot of UFC experience, I'm able to revisit my notes that I took last time and just add on to them. Just watch maybe one fight, uh, two tops on some of these fighters, just because I already have my information saved. In my notes, I don't have to worry about going back and missing something because I already have it there. It's super, super easy, yet we don't always exercise it to the best of our abilities, uh, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, it's super easy to take notes. We could do that. you got a laptop. You're, if you're a pen and paper, pencil and paper type of person, that's there as well. It's, it's super, super helpful, and I really mean that. It's easy. We could all do it. It helps us save time. It helps us save stress. And most importantly, it helps us make better decisions. That's what we're doing this for. Again, it, when we're taking notes, we have all of our thoughts gathered in one place. We're not worried about these little these little details that kind of get popped around throughout fight week. We have it all, it's all like our database, right? It's all in one place. We could look at the whole list of, of items in one particular area rather than just being scatterbrained and, and clinging to you know, these sort of things that will that could consume us prior to the fight. When again, like we talked about beforehand, we forget about them you know, sometimes even before the fight goes on and often after the fight happens, you know, it, it's hard for us to to pinpoint exactly why a, fit, a fight went the way it did at times. And other times it's not. But again, it's it, it, it maybe it's just, you know, the universe saying that this is how uh, this this fight is supposed to unfold in a particular way. Maybe it's something, you know, maybe not as likely as we thought before the fight played out. So 
that's just something I'd like to entertain to you. I'm not I'm not getting on here and saying I'm uh, I'm a masterful genius, but I'm just trying to entertain the idea that maybe it isn't so important for us to be consumed by all these minor details that that are heading into the fight when in reality we're going to forget about them right after the event or even beforehand. Just make good decisions, take the notes, make sure that everything is condensed in one area. Therefore, you're just you're you're setting yourself up to win so much more. You're you're not you know getting swayed super easily. Um, and you have a, a structured, thorough thought process and decision-making um, abilities, right? So those are my thoughts there. Obviously, we'll, we'll get right now to the Asker Askarov news. news. I, I realized that a lot of people were concerned about him on the scale, as was I. I'd never like to see a, a fighter you know, have to go through that. Uh, he missed by a pound. I did see him and Joe face off. He, he seemed fine um, from what my eyes could tell me. Um, it, it's still one of these things. It's just like that could maybe hinder Askarov's performance, but it also might not. Um, there, there was a lot of narrative. There, there's been a lot of narrative on Joe B heading into this fight week or into this fight week now. And because of this Askarov news, I feel like it's going to be kind of swept under the rug, the Joe B news, because it's recency bias. You know, people remember more recently now Askarov missing weight on the scales. And as a result, they it's um, they call it like shiny ob object. Uh, you're, you're being drawn to like a shiny object, uh, shiny object attention or something like that. But you're basically being drawn to an idea because it seems like it's so, so important when in reality there's a lot of and it is very important. But there's a lot of other very important details within this within this big picture. Right. So it's important for me to to factor all of this stuff in, not just one one thing. Um, it's a big, big picture. Um with, with a lot of different puzzle pieces to, to put it together. Um, so again, we, we have some, some concerns on the Askarov size and rightfully so. And I'm, and I'm happy to see that he uh, was able to face off again. He looked good and everything, but, but again, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, Joe, Joe B rightfully so, you know, concerned about, you know, the damage he's taken in his two most recent fights um, and how, where he's at in his career. We don't know. So it's not as if like both guys have, you know, they, they, there's both, there's concerns on both sides of the equation, right? So basically what I do with the information is the fight's still on. Unfortunately, um, you know, Askarov will be ineligible for like a fight of the night bonus. Um, but I don't think the matchup is too different. Again, I don't think it's like a bad matchup for Joe on paper. Um, but again, he's just, you know, he's 35. He's coming off of two fights where he took a lot of damage. And Askarov is, is much younger. Um probably closer to his prime uh, on the rise hungrier. So again, I, that's, that's just me trying to, to make a, a structured informed decision with all of the, the, the information that we have available and not just focus on one little thing or, or you know, one, one little thing in the whole big picture uh, of what we're working with. Right. So it's important to look at all that. Obviously there's other way of news with Adesanya weighing in at 201 pounds. I mean, regardless of where we thought he could have weighed in, uh, we knew be before this way and that he was going to be smaller than Blahovitz, right? And we're not fooling ourselves. He's Adesanya is the guy moving up to light heavyweight. You know, he's a little taller than Blahovitz. They're both tall guys, both big guys, but Blahovitz is the more nat natural light heavyweight. So, so we already knew that regardless of what Israel weighed in at, Blahovitz was going to have some size on him, some, some, you know, some width on him. Um, so, so that to me doesn't change it too much. You could use that argument, whichever way you want. You could say, well, is going to be stronger. That's fair. But you could also say Israel's going to be faster and that's also fair. So it's, it's, it's essentially to me like a wash, right? Like, yeah, we could say like Israel, yeah, he weighed in at 201 pounds, but how does that actually change the matchup from where we're sitting right now? Maybe the fight plays out and we see Israel just looks so much faster than Jan. He just goes out there and he just puts on a clinic and it's very, very obvious that the speed is a difference. But how will we know that sitting here right now uh, when we're giving our predictions? We, we can't exactly tell the future. Um, so in, in the same thing with Blahovitz, if Blahovitz goes out there, is able to close distance, get the clinch, and who knows, maybe even take Israel down, you could use that that argument that way too. Well, oh yeah, Blahovitz, he was, he was bigger than Israel. Um, that's there as well. So there's I'm just trying to entertain the idea that there's a lot of different ways you could look at this sort of information. But again, I always like to look at everything, the big picture, the, the, the whole matchup, not just 
not just stuff that happened at weigh-ins, not just stuff that was said in interviews, not just narratives or theories, because again, we always, very often, I'm not always, I guess, but very often we forget about these narratives after fight week. Again, remember UFC 258, there was, there was videos of, uh, you know, supposedly Burns was, was besting Usman in the grappling department when they were training. But again, nobody remembers that stuff because it's swept under the rug. After the fight happens, it's completely forgotten about. And then it's it's like this nonstop cycle with us, right? We get exposed to this information and we're like, oh, is, is this going to be the fight where this, this sort of narrative affects this fighter's performance? When in reality, for me, I can't quantify these narratives. And and even if, even if it was true, even if Burns was going out there and, you know, out quote unquote out grappling Usman and grapp in in the uh in the training room or whatever. I don't know exactly that that would change that would that would be a different deal uh when it comes to because I've been at Usman there. Like it doesn't like if I just saw a video of, of Burns taking down Usman, right? Okay, that he took down Usman, that's like the main takeaway. But am I like there's a chance that maybe Usman wasn't giving a hundred percent effort. Maybe they're just doing a drill where, you know, Usman wasn't giving him as much resistance. So Burns could complete the takedown. You, you don't know. There's so many things that go on with these fighters that it's so hard to pinpoint one specific thing and go, yep, that's it. That's the way the fight's going to play out because of this little detail. That's just so, that just makes it so difficult for us uh, when, when getting on here and predicting these fights, just look at the big picture when you're going out there, just in anything in life, when you're when you're making big decisions, do you want to factor in everything? Do you want to look at the big picture? Do you want to take notes on, on the pros and cons of your decision making? Or do you want to look at just one minor detail that happened recently um, and, and it's going to sway your opinion? No, we want to look at the big the big picture. Look, make the best decision possible with with all the information that we could collect that we're, we're you know, we try our best to make the, the most optimal decision with, with what we're dealing with. So, and that's what I do with betting. Again, it's, it's one of those things where if, if I bet on a fighter and then, um, you know, the, the fight gets scrapped or, or what have you, I'm, I'm saving my notes on that fighter. I, I'm not, I don't feel like it's lost time. I still have notes on there. So if the fight gets rebooked or even if it doesn't, they get matched up for a, a later matchup. I still don't have to go back and, 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 you know, use all this time on film study because I already have it done in my notes. It's just so much more efficient. The The thought process is so much more clear. And at the end of the day, I'm just giving a very informed opinion. I mean, yeah, I'm not right every time. There's a lot of times when I'm wrong, but I'm putting myself in the best chance to win. We're putting ourselves in the best chance to win if we could just collect all the relevant data when it comes to making a decision. That is the best way to go about it that I found with for long-term success. Um, because again, if we're if we're letting these little things sway us, that's not long term value. Just putting it bluntly, it is not. It, just look at the big picture, the grand scheme of things. It's it's just so it's just so unimpressive to let one little thing out of the big picture just completely sway me. It really is. I got to look at the big picture. That's why I do those long write ups. I want to be completely transparent of, of how I see the matchup and why, and and back it up with evidence. Um, Otherwise, people will just look at me and say that I'm getting lucky, and and I I wouldn't blame them if that was the case because that's that's just the way it is. Because people don't know. Maybe yeah, I do my homework, I do my research on tape, but you know, if people just see me post a bed and not be able to give a write up, they they won't really know where I'm coming from. It, it's transparency, it's honesty, it's it's all going to be there. Um, just one last thing to touch up on. You know, we did have some line movement here in the past 24 hours. We're looking at here best fight odds. Islam Makashev, 6% moved, uh, Tim Elliott, 5%, Piotr Jan, 5%. I mean, you know, we, I got, I beat some line movement here and, and I'm happy to see that. It's just, it's one of those things. Again, I, I, I look at line movement. I know a lot of people are big on closing line value and I, I think it is important, but I always still, I don't get, I don't factor it in too much. I, again, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm grateful for it, but I, <laughs> we, we still need to see these fights play out. So, um, Again, I'm happy to see that there was some line movement that was beat, but I could also use that argument in reverse with my Sean Brady bet. I got him at minus 265. The line has uh, sim since tightened up. He's minus 207 on the book where I, where I placed the bet. So it could go either way. Um, there's been examples on both sides of the, 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 the spectrum there. I remember batting uh, Gavin Tucker against Billy Quarantillo at like minus – or excuse me, plus 120. The line kept getting wider. Um, and what, I, what do you do? He went out there and won a clear decision. Um, I, I even did the same thing with Gavin Tucker against uh, Justin James. I bet him around like minus 150 or so. And then the line kept tightening. 
he still went out there and won and won the fight fairly comfortably um, outside of that sweat there in the first round. So again, the, this, it, and that goes along with weigh-ins too. Again, closing line value, odds movement, it's still kind of noise, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, nice. Uh, the, the ego I'm sure would like it if you get, a, if you, if you beat a line pretty significantly. Uh, but most importantly, the fight needs to play out and I, I can't get too caught up in line movements again, because my decision is already made. If I, if I place a bet before the line moves and it moves favorably, that's great. If not, that's okay too. Um, it just it just matters on on what happens from there. I, I gotta I gotta make my decisions, place the bets. If I see value in the line, if I cap that fighter as a favorite, I'm not thinking twice about it. I'm betting it. I'm not I'm not waiting for the where I think the line could move or should move. Um, I want to make those prompt decisions and then on to the next thing. Um, because again, I, I don't want to get caught up in all this uh, all this noise. To to put it frankly. Um, it's, it's just not good. It's just not good for us. Right. Um, just, yeah, just stick to it, stay on course. And, uh, yeah, that'll conclude this, uh, it, you know, post weigh in thoughts for UFC 259. It's a great car from top to bottom guys. Um, I'm wishing you all the best of luck on the events. And, uh, if you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on Twitter at AJ underscore S C H U L L O. Please feel free to give this uh, channel a subscribe. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and also feel free to leave a pleasant comment below. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated and have a nice day.